Hello friends and welcome back to another Redstone tutorial with Atomic Dave Does Redstone. Today we're going to be having a look at a silent version of a hopper clock and behind me is the traditional version of the hopper clock using pistons. The one that we are doing today will not use pistons at all. I will put the materials required to build this on the screen and down in the description but we're going to jump straight into making this. The first thing you're going to want to do is you want to get two building blocks, pop them down like this an air block gap and another two. On one side, redstone torches, and on those same building blocks, you want redstone dust. On top of these two torches, we're gonna wanna put our two hoppers facing into each other. So one hopper down, place one facing in, break the other one, and another hopper into it. Very, very simple in that respect. Now, we want facing, going, Going toward the redstone dust, we want to place two comparators on top of our hoppers, crouching so that we're not accessing the hopper inventory. And then facing away from those comparators on the building block on the other side, we also want two comparators. Now, on the back of these comparators, we want to crouch and place two more building blocks. If we don't crouch, we're going to put the comparators into minus mode. That is not what we want. On the top of these particular building blocks, we want to see our other two redstone torches. After that, target the front side of the redstone torch, heading sort of towards the side, facing inwards in the same way that the hoppers are facing into each other. We want to face two droppers into each other. Just like, no, not like that, just like so. Now we've got the two droppers running into each other. The only thing that's left for us to do is pop over to the other side and put two more building blocks just like that so that we have a power cycle going. This is in essence complete. In the one of the droppers, doesn't matter what, you want to put one single piece of anything. This is going to act as your counter. It will turn each side on and off. The other thing that we need to do and the easiest way to make sure that this clock works first time every time is on the same side that you have put the counter in the dropper in your hopper you want to put however many items you want timed if you fill this up with 64 in each you're going to be looking at about four and a half minutes of timing so the the more you have the longer the less you have the latter the lesser i should say now having a look at this this is now running that is, it's that simple. We now have a functioning hopper clock. And what is really good about this hopper clock is we have multiple points of power that we can draw it from. If we have a look over here, this is a hopper clock that is running. This is actually a hopper clock that we can turn on and off with the push of a button or the powering of a single block. And that particular block is this one. Uh, if we power this torch, we will set this clock into motion and that's going to activate this particular dropper to spit that item out and that's going to set off the clock and this time is set just for 32 pieces those 32 pieces will drain over then drain back and then we are going to get a signal change so if we have a look we have got multiple points that we can draw a signal out of we can draw a signal out from here we can draw a signal out from here we can draw a signal out from here we can draw a signal out from the point our point of access our point of exit it all depends on the kind of signal that we are wanting if we just want a quick flash then it'll be one of these ones it'll be one of the side ones if we are wanting a sustained circuit for a period of time you're going to want to draw it out of one of these two or even the comparators it can be taken from this can be really handy for things like a um a flushing system for a, a mob farm or a in uh, the example of a shuffling system, you might want it to shuffle for a certain period of time. A dropper shuffler, you want it to shuffle for a certain period of time. It's very easy to do. There are numerous applications for the hopper clocks. These ones are really easy on how you can fit them into your circuit because you have so many access points where the tr more traditional clocks are a lot more limited in where you are able to get that circuit from. For example, a circuit placed here is only going to flash on and off. A circuit uh, drawn out of these is, uh, well, we'd use a comparator for that, but it's, these are, are limited in its draw point. This has a lot more draw options and it is tileable. This particular system is running automatically 
it is tiled it is two next to each other they can flash on and off on these different points without any act, any issue if you want to add a if you want a continuous timer so it is always flowing you will have that design as we built just over there with two comparators running into these building blocks if you want an on off button all you need to do is break one comparator either side it doesn't matter just the comparator under the dropper and to the back or even the side of that block this block without the comparator pointing into it add a button and that's going to be your manual activation now should you have an issue with it starting let's say it didn't start as intended because you didn't put your uh, item in the dropper and then your beginning counting items in the same side so we've got right now we've got the dropper has this dropper does not have the item this drop this hopper is now not draining because these are not powered properly all you need to do is hit that button that's going to, oh no i'm wrong sorry it's the other side we just need to force that one dropper to drop its its uh contents and now that's going to be draining out and that will be activated so essentially if it's not working if you have done all of this and it is not working the items are not moving over go to the topmost redstone torches on the blocks beneath them you can test it with either one if it is not working put a button on one press the button if it's still not working try the other side it's that simple of a fix well, friends, as the sun sets in this world, because I apparently haven't turned off the uh, day cycle, I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. I hope that you can find good uses for it. Play around with the blocks for their power sequencing, because like I said, you have a lot of options with these, these clocks as to where they output their power. It can be a lot more handy than uh, the traditional clock, because even though it has a slightly bigger, um, what's it called? A, a slightly bigger footprint, it will in fact be easier to in my opinion it's easier to fit that into a build than it is something that's long that has a more specific point of power of power access thank you very much for watching friends do hit that like button if you found this helpful consider subscribing and checking out my smp survival series on the mindsomnia server and until the next time i'll see you later bye